Just last week, Anthropic dropped this seemingly complex research blog on the topic of mechanistic interpretability, showing that they have decomposed language models with dictionary learning and demonstrated that using a sparse encoder can extract interpretable features from a one-layer transformer. While this research blog has some extremely in-depth technical discussions, what this ultimately answers is the long-sought question of would AI kill everyone? I mean, AI interpretability. Questions such as what is happening individually in these nodes within the neural networks and how do they contribute to generating their outputs? Because if we can understand what specific node will provide what specific function, then we can directly adjust or activate these nodes which will provide us some extremely good or even highly precise control over what the model outputs. With this, we can also find out what is the point of failure and ensure that the model is safe for general adoption or even be made open source. This would also hint that the future AGI doomers think of might not come at all too. Since if we can fully understand and interpret AI networks, we can pretty much fully guarantee AI safety. And what Anthropic has published here is a huge first step towards it. Traditionally, neural networks has been viewed as a black box. Most of the design aspects are done with a top-down approach where researchers would test out architectures based mostly on intuitions built from prior experiences, and then adjust the hyperparameters based on the model performance. So basically, it's just like trial and error. But the reason why it is often referred to as the black box is because just like human neurons, individual AI neurons are capable of doing multiple things, or in involved in multiple different processes. Each of them would respond to completely unrelated inputs, and this is known as polysemanticity. For example, a single neuron in an LLM can respond to academic citations, English dialogue, HTTP requests, or even Korean text. However, this complexity then hampers our ability to properly align models with intended behaviors, specifically in LLMs where text generations have become so general purpose. So by understanding the function of each node and how they activate, we would then be able to understand the behaviors of the entire network when given some inputs. So to frame the problem, first we have to think of a way to deal with polysemanticity. Last year, researchers over at Anthropic concluded that polysemanticity is caused by something called superposition. This is the result where models have to compress information into a fixed amount of neurons, which then creates polysemanticity that combines many unrelated concepts together into a small number of neurons. More specifically, if a neural network has n feature dimensions, you might intuitively expect that it will only store n different features. But it turns out that neural networks can store more than n features in these superposition if the features are sparse. Being sparse means that only a small number of features are active for a given data point, with many other features being zero. This would then allow for more than the initially perceived limit of n dimensions, as the network can encode additional information in a higher dimensional feature space while still operating within the original dimensionality thanks to sparsity. So as the model relies more on superposition to store more information which would result in combining distinct concepts together, the model's capacity exponentially increases with the trade-off of increase in complexity for making mechanistic interpretation. Last year, researchers at Anthropic had already proposed three possible solutions to this superposition problem. The first one is not to use superposition, the second one is use dictionary learning to find a set of basic features, aka a dictionary that can represent the data. To put it simply, dictionary learning learning is like you hire a music expert to sort out your music collection. So they start by identifying unique sounds like a strum of guitar or a beat of drums that frequently occurs. Then they make a dictionary of these unique sounds and they explain to you that each song in your collection is just a mix of these unique sounds. And for the third solution, it's just a combination of both. Not using superposition does not yield any good results, which is because models achieve lower loss by representing multiple features polysemantically than by representing a single feature and ambiguously and ignore the others. So while dictionary learning provides significant issues with overfitting, it still provides a more attractive interpretation and is more realistic in terms of actual usage than any of the above. So they use this weak dictionary learning algorithm called a sparse autoencoder to break down superpositions and generate singular semantic feature units from a trained transformer model. Then they test it on this one layer transformer model with 512 nodes as a toy example. So you have this one layer transformer with superposition and after disentangling the polysemanticity with a sparse autoencoder and breaking down the features, the new expanded network should ideally be monosemantic, where every neuron contains its own feature only. But in reality, we cannot determine the true amount of features in total, so it's just a method to make the nodes more 
mono semantic for analysis. So in the block, the largest sparse autoencoder they use has 512 times 256 nodes, which is to decompose the possible superposition features of 512 nodes this one layer transformer can have. And being able to decompose it into different components would be the first step in achieving mechanistic interpretability. So they use around 100 billion tokens for training and got some pretty interesting results from the sparse autoencoder where they would represent purer concepts than neurons do. For instance, most of the 4096 features found by the autoencoder have consistent concepts that ranges from DNA sequence, HTTP requests, and legal text. What's even cooler is that if you artificially stimulate a specific feature, it'll steer the model's outputs in that specific way. For example, if turning on the DNA feature makes the model output DNA, turning on the Arabic script feature makes the model output Arabic script too. Some features are even interconnected as well to form a coherent semantic like a finite state automata which can produce results that require complex behaviors. For example, there are features that work together to generate valid HTML, like there are features handling all the div, td, span, there are features for inserting signs, and there are features that provide the right indentations. To also understand the interface and the results they've got, this label beside the diagram or graph means that it is from model A, 0th dictionary run, and the 20th feature in that model. And by going to this link, you can then explore all the features that have made for two models, A and B, where the learned sparse row is just the amount of nodes that the sparse autoencoder decided to multiply by. So by eight times, there are 4,096 features, and by 256 times, there are 131,072 features in total. And the more features they have, the more monosemantic they are. So these numbers are just the number of nodes the autoencoder has, depending on the desired level of sparsity and the complexity of the features to be extracted. So there are varied expansion factors which generate different number of features, all root from a one-layer transformer that only has 512 nodes. You can then click into each feature to explore what that feature does and how it's activated. And to understand the information about a feature, this diagram provides all the explanations you need. While this is not the only research on AI safety and alignment, it is still one of the most in-depth and interesting ones with easy-to-access data for to explore. The future of alignment may not be as bleak as the media portrays. And if you're by any chance looking for an easier way to fine-tune an open source model for your company at scale but don't have the hardware to train or time to set up an API, today's sponsor, Gradient, has got it for you. Gradient is a scalable AI cloud platform that simplifies the process to build custom AI applications for enterprise and developers, especially if you want to fine-tune LLMs for your own project or company as it scales. It can be used to create AI applications to automate customer support for your business, streamline operational processes with models built for managing key projects, or you can even throw in your internal code base so that you can have a Q&A chatbot instead of browsing the badly commented documentations that the previous developer wrote. On top of that, Gradient provides simple web APIs for fine-tuning models, generating completions and embeddings, so you can build anything on top of any state-of-the-art open source LLMs with ease, while also being SOC 2 and HIPAA compliant. Since they are using open source models, you will be able to maintain ownership and control over your private data and the fine-tuned models. No other company <coughs> will be able to train your data to train their own models. Gradient wouldn't peek at your data too, since you have your own private environment, so you'll never lose control or leak any of your data. So you'll fully own the model you fine tune on Gradient and nobody else will ever be able to get their hands on it, even Gradient. For the pricing, typically for any self fine tuned model, you usually have to pay for all the upfront costs for dedicated infrastructure along with the compute costs. But if you use Gradient, you'll only pay for what you use by the token, including both fine-tuning and inferencing without the hassle of setting up any infrastructure. If you get started now with the link down in the description, you will also receive a $5 bonus credit that is only limited to you guys, so shout out to Gradient for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching, a big shout out to Andrew Laschelias, Alex J, Chris Ladu, Alex Maries, Miguelim, Deegan, Fifal, Daddy Wen, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.